that folk music that you play there? What is that? <laughs> How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Stud Circle who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard, heard no horse. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, who's gonna rock? Who's gonna rock it tonight? Mama, who's gonna rock? Who's gonna rock it tonight? The cowboy at the bar's waiting for his chance. He's got a pistol in his pocket. He thinks he can dance. Mama, who's gonna rock? Who's gonna rock it tonight? Tonight. Yeah, yeah. Mama, who's gonna ride? Who's gonna rock it tonight? 
<laughs> all right, all right, all right. The show is Horses Say None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin, and our guest tonight is Henry Gross. Great to Welcome meet you, Ralph. Show. Nice to have you. Thank you. You are a founding member of Shanana. I admit it. You're not with the government, I hope, but I did no. do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did. We got together in 1969 to bring back doo-wop in the midst of psychedelia. And it was a pleasure to do it. Someone had to do it. It was a stroke of genius. Well, it wasn't mine, unfortunately. It was the, the uh, brother of one of the members uh, called George Leonard who had this epiphany when the Columbia Kingsmen, a kind of social group, they sang Little Darlin' one night by the Diamonds. And he thought, hmm, the reaction was amazing. And he thought, well, you know, if we get, if you get, if you get 50s clothes, you grease your hair, you put three guys up front in gold lame suits, could be something. Good idea. Yes, it was. And you played at Woodstock. I did. I was the youngest performer there. You wouldn't know it to see this uh, fossil now, but I, I actually was. I was 18. I had just turned 18 in April, and we played in August. I admit it. <laughs> and you're a singer-songwriter now living in Nashville. I am. I uh, left the group, and it was. I loved um, being part of something that brought attention to the doo-wop music I loved growing up. But I didn't want to do the same songs and be limited to that genre. So I wanted to be a songwriter. And at that time, a singer-songwriter was a very viable sort of you know, hard to achieve, but yet somehow still possible in the midst of, of all that. There, it was quite a popular thing. And I thought, well, throw my hat in the ring. And so I left the group. And about a year later, I had a deal with ABC Dunhill. and then. After that, I was on A&M for a couple of albums, and Capitol, and Life Song, and blah, blah, and CBS. I mean, I made a lot of records, and I was very fortunate. Some of them were actually pretty sizable records, so very lucky. Well, we're glad that you could make it to Horses Sing None of It. Well, it's my pleasure. You know, it's, it was really nice of you to have me, and, uh, and I'm, it's always great to get an opportunity to sing my songs as, to folks as far away as Fargo. <laughs> Why don't we hear one now? Yeah, all right, you will. This is a little, this song kind of covers the experience of my life a little bit. It's called High Enough. Everybody's telling me I'm guilty of a felony. I took somebody's melody and put it in my song. I admit I'm lazy and my memory might be hazy, but I'd never be so crazy cause there's still no right from wrong. Been high enough to see over the mountain, been high enough to fly above the rain. Been down so low, stole pennies from the fountain, been high enough to toss them back again. Every day my honey says my jokes are not so funny and I better earn some money if I want to get her love. Though I know what I'm missing, I'm a man on a mission, got a strong inner vision and I thank the stars above. Been high enough to see over the mountain, been high enough to fly above the rain. Been down so low, stole pennies from the fountain, been high enough to toss them back again. I believe it's down to fate, whatever's meant to be. What I am and what I ain't is good enough for me. Yeah, been high enough to see over the mountain, been high enough to fly above the rain. Been down so low, stole pennies from the fountain, been 
high enough to toss them back again. Been high enough to feel I really made it in. High enough to throw it all away. Had a winning hand and I overplayed it. Been high enough to see it all again. Been high enough to know it's just a game. Thank you. Good one. So That's sort of the story, isn't it? <laughs> There's a lot of ups and downs. Everybody's got them. So rather than being mad at them or, you know, regretful about them, I just cover them all in that song. <laughs> it says everything I could say when people say, well, how about those old record contracts? Well, you know, so what? We're all here. It's all good. Just move on. So you've had the opportunity over the years to work with several big names in music. Wonderful people. I mean, it's been, I mean, I've probably shared stages with ev everybody from my generation at one point or another. Um, and, and it's, when I think back on the odds of, of what it was of, of being a kid, you know, playing records by everyone from the Beach Boys to whoever, and then being able to go out and tour with them and become friends. Who could dream this up? You know, if, if, if I'd known this was going to happen, I would have skipped all the homework in school. <laughs> and as it is, I was real nervous about it. You know, I thought, well, I better, I better learn all this stuff. But it's been great. And, uh, and, it, and it seems to continue through the, uh, you know, the help of very good friends like Jim Delacroce, who has believed in me for a while and continues to try and help me do what I'm doing, and Alex Rubin and different people that you know try and uh, get behind me and give me their hearts. You know, they, for some reason, they think I should sing these songs for folks, and I'm eternally grateful that anybody will sit and listen to them. <laughs> I think we should s sit and listen to another one. All right then, and this one. I think it'll be pretty simple, and again, we'll tell you exactly how I feel about my life. And it's called Lucky Me. The waitress asks me if I'm famous. I say no, but I'm hungry. She says the eggs are cold, the toast is burnt, the bacon's mostly fat, and I say, lucky me, I like it like that. Nowhere to stay, I ring a doorbell. The landlord looks me up and down and says, The walls are thin, the rooms are cramped, there's no place to hang your hat. And I say, lucky me, I like it like that. Cause every day I play it straight, never tempt the hand of fate. In a world of give and take, I take what's given. I find the gypsy fortune teller in a rundown shack across the tracks. She says, Money isn't in the cards, hard work will break your back. And I say, Lucky me, I like it like that. Cause every day I play it straight Never tempt the hand of fate In a world of give and take I take what's given Standing at the gates of heaven St. Peter smiles at me and says The food is great the hotel's grand, your bags have been unpacked, and I say, lucky me, I like it like that. Lucky me, I like it like that. <laughs> lucky me, mate. 
Great <laughs> one. Thank you. We should let folks know how they can find out more information about your recordings and your tour schedule. Well, they can just throw Henry Gross in Google or get henrygross.com. I've got all my records and CDs. You know, I had a pretty big hit, in, a worldwide hit in 1976 called Shannon. And a lot of people write me letters and go, I really like your song. You know, and I think it's a compliment, but I've done a lot. I mean, I write songs every day. And so I hope people come and check out my newer work. You know, I know it's hard. People are distracted and, and very often don't sit and listen to albums anymore. But that's why I work so hard on my songs, trying to make sure that every word matters to me so that if I take three and a half minutes out of your life that it, it's, I kind of want it to be like I shook your hand. So, you know, check it out. Maybe you won't be upset at the end. <laughs> so, and I, and I do try to write songs where the light shines at the end of the tunnel, where there's some hope. You know, and I, I, I just think that's a good thing. Because a lot of music that I hear, uh, you know, is dark. And I feel that uh, they don't need me to help with that. I think <laughs> there's enough of that going around and, uh, and putting, you know, I try to put a positive spin on things. And maybe uh, some people, they, they kind of enjoy to have the what's wrong pointed out to them. So I'm still standing here trying to, old hippie trying to point out what's right. So breathing and loving and just being here is it's really good. <laughs> you know, so right on to that. That's, and that's, that's why I do these things. So. Great, let's have another one then. All right, well, my pleasure. And this is one that's, that I think is kind of a sweet song. I will do whatever to put you back together. Somebody's gone and you've fallen apart. If you want, you got me. Nothing's gonna stop me fixing your broken heart. If I make you smile now, in a little while now, would you be ready to make a new start? I can bring you sunshine, we can have a good time, fixing your broken heart. I want to be your morning glory, your Valentino in the afternoon. I want to tell you bedtime stories, under the light of the silvery moon Bet you by tomorrow you're forgetting all your sorrow I'll take you out for a walk in the park We'll go picking flowers while away the hours Fixing the broken heart I want to be your mom and glory, your Valentino in the afternoon. I want to tell you bedtime stories under the light of the silvery moon. I will do whatever to put you back together. Somebody's gone and you've fallen apart. If you want, you got me. Nothing's gonna stop me. It's in your broken Thank you. Nice. And positive. We'll fix it. <laughs> you know, if it's broken, let's fix it. So many songs I hear just it's broken. What a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the door closes, three more open. So that's what keeps us rocking. At one point in your career, you toured in Pump Boys and Dinettes. I did. Now you are with the government. <laughs> I did. I did. A, I did the first road company, and it was a wonderful show. We had uh, Jonathan Edwards, uh, "Sunshine Go Away Today" was was in the show, and Nicolette Larson, who had the big hit on Neil Young's song "Gonna Take a Lot of Love," and we had a fabulous bass player named Gary Bristol, 
and a wonderful singer named Donna Watton, and a great pianist called Jonathan Siegel. We had a wonderful six-person cast. And it's a sweet show, kind of a country-oriented show, which was a harbinger of things to come in my life, because not long after that, I moved to Nashville. I did the Pump Boys show in about 1981. I think it was about then, or 82. And then in 86, I moved to Nashville, where I still live. I grew up in, uh, I, well, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Uh, but I would like to point out, um, if there are any policemen watching, that I did not take those tires. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, and I lived in Manhattan and Queens and everywhere in New York. And uh, wound up in Nashville, which the Nashville uh, scene is really great because it's sort of, I mean, to move to the village now and, and sing in the, in, in the, in the park at you know, Fifth Avenue there, uh, you would need, uh, what, about $30 million to get a one-bedroom. So, but Nashville's great because all the songwriters can come there, and it's still affordable. So every day the bus stops and, and a load of great, talented, hopeful people, not just country people, but pop people and you know, all sorts of writers are coming there. And there's a lot of studios, and everything's music. You know, in L.A., everybody's an actor, and in uh, Nashville, everybody's a songwriter. So they say. Some uh, do not have the gene for shame. But, other, but others, you know, are learning and come there to learn. I had had, you know, sold quite a, a lot of records. And then when I moved to Nashville, I always thought, well, I wanted to write with some other songwriters that I thought were really great. And I was very fortunate to hook up with writers like Roger Cook, who wrote uh, such great songs for the world as uh, Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress and uh, You've Got Your Troubles, I've Got Mine, Here Comes That Rainy Day Feeling. Again, he wrote about 100 top 10 records. He's in all the songwriter hall of fames and Tommy Rocco the great country writer and those guys as much as I thought I knew about songwriting I learned so much more from them so that I could write a song a song like High Enough uh, Mama Who's Gonna Rock and that I played in the beginning and Fixing Your Broken Heart I wrote with Roger Cook and uh, although there was a third uh, writer on uh, Mama Who's Gonna Rock who was the great Henry Paul who's the lead singer of the Outlaws in the country band Blackhawk so it's a community where our passion in life is shared. And, uh, and not always for the country music thing. I mean, I, don't, I grew up in Brooklyn. What did I know about country music? My mom had a three album set of songs by Hank Williams uh, on MGM. So that was, I don't know where she got it or why she had it because they didn't play it on the radio. Someone must have left it at the house is all <laughs> I can figure. But I used to listen to it and, and uh, you know, I, it had as much of an effect on me at that time as Buddy Holly did. I wouldn't say as Elvis, but I thought it was pretty amazing that a, a little combo could sound that good. Yes, Hank Williams is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty amazing. And, and, and to think the poor guy had no Pro Tools. I mean, they couldn't tune him <laughs> up. I mean, I, I don't even believe it. You know? <laughs> I think the versions out now must be, must be fixed because you know? <laughs> they were really swinging. That's great. You know, you heard those voices. When I heard country music, I heard guys like Ray Price singing and George Jones, and I thought, Wow, you know, and Merle Haggard, I thought, well, everybody, it's just the greatest thing in the world. And then they don't all sing like that, but, you know, it's who could? But it was really great to be exposed to that as well as the Elvis side of it, which was still really country music. I mean, the guy singing Blue Moon of Kentucky. I mean, it's all folk music. Someone wrote me a letter recently about Shannon, which was this big pop hit I had that I wrote about Carl Wilson's who lost an Irish setter named Shannon, and I had one named Shannon. And, and, you know, he wrote me a letter saying, I figured this out. That's just a folk song. <laughs> Absolutely right. You know, that's, that's, all, that's all any of this is if it tells a story. I mean, the, the great, you know, what were the Clancy brothers singing? Folk song. You know, it's all, it's all, it's all that good pop music should, any good song should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It should be a little play. You know, I will do whatever to put you back together, and then what will I do? Oh, really? Will you do that too? And I want to be this in your life, and then conclude it. You know, it's got to have a story, and I love the stories. And the brilliance of the Nashville writers, you know, just never ceases to amaze me. You know, and all good songwriters. So I wanted to be a part of it, and hopefully I, I don't think I could have written a song like High Enough if I hadn't moved to Nashville. I think I could have written more songs like the ones I'd written. But it, it expanded my view. I wrote jazzy songs. I wrote, so it was really kind of a thrill.
people on the street are friendly there too. Well, yes, they, they, they do, you know. And, you know, as I say to people, you know, in New York, people have a rather crude thing. They say, you know, expli expletive deleted, you. You know, they say that in New York. And in Nashville, they say, bless your heart. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes the same effect. But, you know, it's great. And people are really kind in Nashville. And they, and they I moved there, and it was amazing. Because when I went to publishing houses uh, and, and record companies in, in New York, and I love New York. There were people, and, and, and they had armed guards downstairs, and they had to buzz you up to get to the 50th floor in the EMI. And in Nashville, you go in, and the guys had guitars sitting next to their desk. And I thought, how great is that? So.